Good morning everybody, welcome to this lovely Monday morning. Okay, We're going to do a few stretches using blocks um, to stretch out our hips and our quads and also a little bit of core as well. So if you have two blocks, just place them at the front of your mat. Um, and we'll start in our Siddhavada Kanasa, okay? So we'll bring our bombs into the middle of the mat. Stay easy, cross the back initially as you roll down. Okay. Smooth as much of the back into the mat as you can. And then just gently bring the two soles of the feet together, knees out nice and wide. You can rest the hands onto the tummy, just encompassing that abdominal space, just so we can connect with the breath as it flows in through the nose and as it exhales and releases from the body. So just find a little space, a bit of space, maybe a little bit of softness before you start. Just letting your attention to your back to stay, just to flow with your breath. Time exhale, just finding space. Every time you inhale, just flowing that lovely oxygen into all your cells. And with that, sending some love and some care and attention. Lovely. So after a little few nice long inhales and exhales here, just settling into our space. We'll just gently draw the two knees together. Separate the feet hip width. Just curl the tailbone and rest the lower back into the mat before we lift the knees and hug the knees nicely and tightly into our tummies. Lovely. So we're going to warm up our spine using our moving bridge. So two feet, hip width two to three inches away from the buttocks. Find that the feet are parallel to one another and all four corners of the feet rested out onto the mat. As we inhale, we'll float the arms up and over the head and gently rest them on the floor behind us. As we exhale, kind of roll that pelvis, lift the hips and float them up to the sky. And as we inhale, the arms float all the way back down. And as we exhale, the spine peels all the way back down. Again, just continue with that flow. Inhale, arms up and over the head. Gently rest them on the floor. Exhale, pressing evenly into the feet to curl and then float the hips up to the sky. Arcing through the spine, growing front chest wall towards chin. Inhaling, the arms come back down. And exhale. Inhaling as we peel vertebrae by vertebrae back down to the mat. Lovely. A couple more times. Slow and steady. Arms up and over. Exhale. Peel. Lift. And feel that lovely height in the hips moving through the spine into the chest. Inhaling the arms come back down. And exhaling the spine peels back down. Last time. Inhaling up the arms go. Exhaling, roll, curl and lift. Now just stay here for a couple of breaths. Bring the awareness firstly to the four corners of the feet. Pressing into the feet to lengthen and lift the hips. Take a nice big breath into your rib cage. Broaden it out. Stretch right into those armpits. Lovely. And then inhale, we'll bring the arms all the way back down. Exhale, we'll gently peel the spine back down, smoothing low back into the mat again. We'll just lift the knees, tuck the thighs, drawing them into the chest wall. Lovely. And then we'll cross the legs over as we're doing easy cross legs, lying down, holding on to the side edges of the feet. Just a couple of little roll ups and down, hovering as we roll to sit. As we roll back, maybe swing the feet up and over the head towards the back of the mat. Up and down that spinal column, right onto those tails. Lovely. Last time, 
Knees coming into your easy cross legs, settle and smooth. The butt cheeks gently out onto the floor, tip the fingers out in front of you, and we'll just take a nice extended roll down and out. So as you creep the fingertips away, gently soften into the side edges, hip creases, lengthen out through the spine, and as you exhale, take it low a little bit. And one last little bit. Lovely, and then we'll slide the hands and we'll change the cross of the legs. Okay, tip the fingers, side edges of the hips, either tippy fingers, okay, or you can have the palm of the hand if you've got quite long elevated arms. We're going to lift the shoulders up towards the ears a little bit, draw them away and behind from the ears, and then allow the shoulder blades as they slide down the back. We're going to let the front chest will rise up to your chin. And you're going to draw the shoulder blades together and down the back as much as you can. Really opening into that front chest wall, chest wall up to chin. It's going to be nice when we stretch into the upper thoracic. Lovely. And then we'll just gently release the arms down from here. Bring the two feet out in front of you as if we're going to come into our reverse tabletop but firstly we're going to cross right ankle bone over left thigh just make sure that the bone doesn't sit onto the flesh it just slides gently to the side take the hands behind you fingertips facing forward okay. take the left leg closer to you lift the bum draw the sit bone back a little bit okay and then gently drop the bum down to the floor okay and from here you want to just send the chest wall forward to the thigh Engage that right foot so it's nice and kind of flexed. Okay. So just a very simple stretch into your right hip. Seated half pigeon. You can walk the hands a little bit closer and press in another little bit. So it's almost like concertina into a tight V shape here. That's it, one more breath here. And then we'll take that right foot down again, swing the left arm over, lift the bum, draw the sit bones back, ground the butt cheeks into the floor. Walk your right foot in a little bit, walk your head, neck, chest in closer to that left thigh. Press the left knee forward, lift up nice and tall. So again, just isolating into your left hip here. Lovely, one more breath, just really releasing. So get a good push of that left knee forward. Brilliant, and then we'll pop the two feet onto the floor. We'll walk them around so that we kind of have like a triangle shape here. Give the wrists a little shake out as they took a little bit of pressure into them and then put the hands again behind the hips, fingertips facing forwards. Now you may need to adjust yourself when you come into your reverse tabletop. You want to stack it just like a coffee table, knees over ankles and shoulders over heels of the hands. So once we lift the hips up, you want to lift the belly right up to the ceiling, lift the hip bones right up to the ceiling, find the grounding, not only through the four corners of the feet, but also through your hands as well. So keeping that nice lift here, one more breath here. And then we're going to swing our bum back, floating it off the floor and push onto our two heels. And then forward you go and push it back up into that reverse table. Exhale, swing back, roll onto the heels, try and just slide it through up one more time. Good, rolling it back. Hold it here for a wee minute so the bums are off the floor. We're pushing from all portions of the hands into the shoulders. Belly button's engaged. And then we'll gently drop the bum to the floor. Cross the legs over. Rolling over those feet. We'll stake the hands out. Shoulder width out in front of us here. Coming into tabletop. And from tabletop, just three cat and cows. Nice dip. Exhale to curl. Lovely dip of the spine. 
and length right up into the crown of the head, right up into that tailbone. And as we exhale, real squeeze, curl and roll it in. Last time. Lovely. And curl. From here, we'll come into our hair pose. So making sure our heels are uplifted to our sit bones as we draw back to the rest of Bums on our heels, lengthen and extend the arms away, Shashagasana, hair pose. Okay, so just with expanding the length from the side body here, front body and back body, right out to those hands. And then we'll come forward in our extended tabletop, so our shoulders will stack out over the heels of our hands. So we're going to do like a little caterpillar to mobilize the shoulders and also helps really draw in our core. So we're going to bring our bums back, take the forearms almost to the floor, the elbows are still floating off, and drop the chest as low as you can and sweep forward. Once you get as far forward as you can, then push up and then all the way back. So the butt cheeks come almost to the heels, the forearms almost to the floor, and you low press all the way through, all the way up. And back. Do it another couple of times, just do it really slowly. Keep those elbows drawn in, try not to let them splay out. So when you're coming forward, do engage that pelvic floor. Get that core sucked in so it gives you a little bit of support last time. Lovely. And then we'll take it back into our hair pose. Brilliant. From our hair pose, if your hands are off the mat, just take them back so they're a couple of inches from the front of the mat. Step it back into your plank pose. Making sure feet are hips with shoulders directly stacked out over heels of the hands. Feel the belly button lift into the spine. Active, really active legs and arms and hands. Brilliant. Just one more breath here. And as we exhale, we'll come all the way down to the floor for our cobra. You can either put the knees on the mat if you want to. Shoulders come forward, chest will drop, legs and feet slide away. And then do mobilize those shoulders so you create the space in around the neck. Drawing the elbows back towards the back of the mat. Inhale, engaging core, lift and float up into your cobra pose. And just stay here for a minute, bringing your awareness to the tops of your feet. Glued into that floor. Exhaling, we'll come down, taking it back through our tabletop. Curling out our toes down with facing dog. So again, just checking that lovely alignment between the hands, shoulder width, feet, hips width. And just from here, we'll really sink back to the heels and then push up onto the toes. Back to the heels, up onto the toes. Just to get the legs a little bit teased out here. Lovely. And then once we've dropped those heels down, we're going to just take a little extra two or three breaths here, just finding a steady place. So just gently evolve that stretch through the legs, through the arms, through the spine. And then I gaze forward, we'll step, jump or walk front of the mat. Full forward fold, soft knees if you want. You can have straight legs if you want. Just breathing out. Lovely. And then we'll gently roll up that spine all the way up to stand. Big inhale. Exhaling hands to heart. So we'll just do some sanitation A here. Nice and steady. The flow is quite slow, moving with your breath. Inhale, float the arms up. Big inhale. Exhale, swan dive, full forward fold. A little inhale into our half. And as we exhale, we'll take our right leg back, low lunge. We'll inhale into high lunge. Exhaling to plow hands and step that left foot back, plank pose down to the mat, cobra, as we inhale. Exhaling to come down, inhaling through our table and exhaling back into our downward facing dog. Inhale, bring our left foot in between our hands, float the arms up on that inhale to high lunge. 
Exhale into plant the hands, step right to left, fall forward, fold. And then exhale into your fold. Inhale, we roll up the spine. Exhaling to bring ourselves down straight away. Lovely deep full forward fold. Inhaling to half. I say the forward. Exhale this time. Left leg goes back. Low lunge. Inhaling into a high lunge. Exhaling. Hands go down. Right leg goes back. Plank. Exhaling. Continues down to your cobra. Inhale. Exhaling then through table into downward facing dog. Inhaling, right leg comes in between the hands, up we come, high lunge. Lovely, exhaling, plant the hands, step left to right, full forward fold. Inhale, lovely, roll up that spine. Exhaling, hands to heart. Give yourself a wee moment here. Lovely, inhale, arms come up. Reaching up, exhale again, folding it in. Full forward fold. Inhaling into a half. Heart centre lifted. We're going to stay here for a moment, just checking that we've really sent the body weight over all four corners of the feet. That we're long, tall spine, side bodies to the crown of the head. We've got a lovely active belly button drawn to spine. And then as we exhale, we'll step, jump or walk back into that plank pose, continuing down to the floor. Again, we're kind of come into our cobra pose. So lifting and lengthening each leg away, sliding those lovely shoulder blades back and down, elbows to the back of the room. Inhale, cobra. Good. Now from here, really press into the four corners of the hand. And keep a lovely long, tall spine and just reach it up just another little bit. So the front thigh's pelvis stays grounded. Lovely. And then we'll come down to the floor. Just tip your nose onto the mat, lengthen each leg away again. And then bend both knees and really point the toes. So when you point the toes to the ceiling, push the hip flexors into the mat. Keep those lovely toes pointed to the ceiling and inhale into that cobra again. So you might find you can't come up as high, don't worry. Keep those legs lovely active and toes really pointed. And then exhale down, send the legs away. We'll push up back through that tabletop. Curl out our toes, come into down facing dog. Lovely. From our downward facing dog, a nice little twist. So we're going to look, okay, we're going to turn the hips to, so if you swing the hips to the right side of the mat and send your left heel into the middle of the mat, roll up onto the back of those lovely right toes and push your right knee across to the left side of the mat. As you then lengthen back with those two arms, you want to lift into your left hip. And feel a lovely stretch evolving across your iliac crest into your side waist, into that lat. So try and keep as much height with this as you can. Lovely. So we've got good, strong arms here, just lengthening us back. And then we'll come back into our centre down facing dog. And then we'll swing the hips out to the left side of the mat, bring our right heel into the middle. Okay, Swing our left knee through, we're up on the backs of those left toes. And we'll press back in towards the back of the mat, lengthening into your right side body. Lovely, and then we'll swing it back into our down facing dog. Inhale forward into that plank pose. Just really engage this pose here. Okay. You take your awareness from the crown of the head to the heels. There's nothing bendy, nothing sagging. Everything's extended, lifted, and drawn in. And then we'll come all the way down to the floor. Once we're down to the floor, extend each leg away from you. Okay. Good. So shoulder stretch with our left arm, we'll take our left arm out in line with our shoulder. 
we're going to fully press the whole length of that arm down into the mat. So you kind of have to put the nib of the shoulder right down into that mat. Okay. Bring your right foot to your left foot. Okay. Tip the fingers of the right hand just outside the chest wall. And give yourself a good swing and press over onto your left side. Now, once you're here, just check the alignment of both. So you might need to move your hips in a little bit because you might end up looking a little bit, bit banana shaped. Okay. When you think about your left hand and left arm, you want to fully rooted the mat. Creep that right hand in a little bit. So you press onto each foot here. We're going to take our right arm up to the sky. So there's a bit of work going on in the shoulder. It shouldn't be too uncomfortable. Okay, lovely. From here, we're going to bend our right knee. Point, point, point that lovely toe down towards the inside thigh. Good. And then we're going to extend it up to the sky. Lovely. Brilliant. And then we'll step that right foot behind. Our left knee, slide it away a little bit and can release then that right arm, either tucking into the side waist or some of you might prefer just to keep the palm of the hand flat and push back, 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 back like that. So it depends on what your shoulder mobility is like. If you want to feel that stretch a little bit more, keep the arms straight and press the back arms towards one another. Okay, but just, just to be very aware of any innovation, what's going on into this shoulder. Good. So whatever you've done with your arm, okay, I'm going to bend that left knee, place the sole of the left foot onto the mat and push the knees out to the right. Good. So we'll swing our right arm back up, just use it as a little cup fingertips, slide that left leg away, side edge. Okay, use your right hand to help push you up to rest onto your left elbow. Left elbow sits under a shoulder. Okay, so when we want to come into a side elbow plank, we need to feel the lift into the shoulder. Okay, a lot of times we collapse. So what I want you to actually do is take your left right hand and hold on to your left rib, left rib cage here. Feel the length of the forearm into the hand and lift into the shoulder. So you've already getting this lovely space created here. Got really active feet, and we're going to inhale, lift up. Good. From this lift position, we're going to let the hips come down a little bit, and then up. And down a little bit, and then up. And down a little bit, and then up. Lovely. Then we'll reach that lovely right arm up. Lift the hips just that little bit higher. Sweep the right arm over the head. So you can get tippy fingers almost down to the mat. Lifting the hips higher. Drops the arm a little bit lower. Brilliant. And then we'll bring that right arm down. We'll bring our left hip back down. Okay. And then we're just going to swing our right knee forward to the front of the mat with our right heel at the back of our right thigh. Lovely. And then just extend that left leg back a little bit. Tip your fingers on the floor, lift up and lengthen. So we want to keep the whole top side of that leg directly below this hip onto the floor. Lovely. Now walk that left leg back another little smidge. Once you walk the left leg back another little smidge, you're going to flick the heel up towards the bum. Now really point. Now sometimes you get a bit of a hamstring like, well we'll say cramp here. Okay, but we want a really active leg and use the energy in the leg to draw the heel towards the butt cheek and push and point into that toe. Lovely. And then we'll release that leg down, we'll plant the hands, okay. curl the toe into the left foot, walk that left foot in a little bit, reach the right leg up to the sky. Yeah. Sinking back into that lovely heel. And take the eye gaze forward. Square off your pelvis. Rock it forward into a three-legged plank. Good. You can keep the leg floating. You can drop that left knee to the mat if you want to. Down we go, chest wall. And then allow that right leg to come down. We'll push up into our upward facing dog. 
exhaling into our downward facing dog. Brilliant. So we'll rock it forward back into that plank pose. Exhaling slowly and steadily as the shoulders come forward. The elbows lock out over the heels and the hands down we come. Stretching each leg away. We'll now take our right arm out and directly in line with the shoulder. Press into the front part of that arm. Tippy fingers with the left hand. Outside chest wall. Left leg swings to right. And we'll roll over onto that right shoulder. So again, we want to look down the middle end of our body. Feel that we're nice and even. Walk that left hand in. Okay, and then we can lift that left arm up. So we've got a really active right foot here. We're going to bend our left knee. Brilliant. And then we're going to reach that left leg up to the sky. A little bit higher. Lovely. And then we'll pop the foot behind. Okay. We can do whatever you want with this arm. So it could be just the back arm pressing down or you can hook it into your side waist. Just be aware of how your shoulder feels. Press the left hip away from you. Bring it onto the sole of your right foot. So you're sending your knees over to the left here. Lovely. So we'll take the right leg back down, glue it onto the mat, bring the left arm over, use it to help us support us, left leg on, right elbow down to the mat. So we're stacked again with the elbow directly under the shoulder, the lift up into the shoulder, left hands clasping around your right rib cage, squeeze one foot onto the other, okay, and inhale, lift those hips up. So this hand's kind of helping you go lift, 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 lift. And then almost down to the mat and then lift. And almost down to the mat and lift. One more time, almost down to the mat. Lift, left arm up more, you lift those hips up. More left arm wants to just sink down towards the floor. Brilliant. And then as we bring that hip down, we're going to bring our left knee forward. We've got our left foot directly underneath our left thigh. Right leg is scooping away. Tippy fingers. So this actually kind of evolves into a little bit of a back bend for you. And then maybe we'll walk the weight leg away just that a little bit. Make sure it feels like it's directly behind you. And then we're going to use the energy in that right leg just to bend the knee, point the toe. Now draw the heel towards your shoulders. Push and point into that toe. Send that right hip forward and down. Lovely. And then we'll release that leg. Plant the hands on the floor, curl to walk that right leg in a little bit. Float it back up into our three-legged leg. Left leg up to the sky, downward facing dog. And we'll square off that left hip. We'll take ourselves forward into our three-legged plank pose. And again, you can pop your right knee onto the mat. Exhaling to bring your shoulders forward. Then we can release the leg to the floor and press up into our upward facing dog. Exhaling into downward facing dog. Lovely. Just like take this as a lovely little pause point before we move on in our flow. I'm just going to come on to our knees and we're going to take our blocks. So shoulder width apart in front of you. Lovely. So once they're in front of you, just place your hands onto those two blocks, okay? And come into your hair pose. So you can have that to walk the body back a little bit to facilitate that there. Draw those sit bones back.
I love this. This will get us into a nice position to start with our next section. So from here, press up onto your tabletop. You're going to take your left foot and place it on that block. Now, once your left foot's on that block, you want to keep your knee directly in line with this ankle. Okay? At that point then, okay, you're going to make sure your right leg's behind your right block. Okay? And just walk that leg back as much as it can go and soften onto the top of the foot. Okay? And then just press up onto your tippy fingers. So the left arm can just kind of hook down the side of that left leg. Squaring off those lovely hips. Nicely lift up here. So when we're lifting up tall, we want to die, almost like send the tailbone forward. Hip flexors nicely opened in that right leg. Great, and then we're going to curl the toe under in that right foot. You can place the whole palm of your right hand on the block. Lift your right knee and really press back into that right heel. Keep this alignment working here. Good. From here, we're going to lift up out of the waist and then turn to the left. Keep thinking about how we're keeping that left knee in line with ankle front and sideways. Lovely. And then we'll come back down. We'll pop that hand, that knee down to the floor. Bring our left hand in between the blocks. Okay. And cut the fingertips on that right hand. Lift the right knee off the mat. Step the foot in ever so slightly and swivel the heel down. And then inhale. Float that right arm up. Good. So if you're finding that this is too low, you can place your hand on that right block. Yes. And then from here, we're going to extend and lengthen into that left leg. We've got a super hamstring stretch into that left leg. Now draw those left ribs through just another little bit, reaching up to that right hand. Lifting into your right hip bone. And we'll sweep that right hand back down to the block. Okay, come back onto the ball of our right foot, making sure it's directly behind this. And we'll drop our right knee down. Okay, and this time now we're going to take our left foot so it sinks off the top of the block. And just rest your left elbow onto that left block. Press those hips forward. So now you've got your left foot in front. This is giving you a lot of little extra height here. Lovely. And then we'll bring ourselves back onto this block. Slide the foot down so it's back on the block. Roll onto the knife edge of your left foot. Place your left hand to the inside of it. Place your right hand on that block. As you swing that left knee out, take your right leg back another little bit. And we'll just rest our elbow onto our left thigh. So you've got the whole of the outside edge of that left foot gently resting onto the block. Lovely. One more breath here. Really rolling out that thigh. Lovely. And then we're going to curl the toe under in the back foot. Both hands are on the block. Lift that knee. Press back to the heel and drop out that knee just another little bit. And almost sink the pelvis down to the mat. Well done. Good. So from here, as that right knee comes back down, okay, top of the foot's on the mat, okay, we're going to bend that right knee and lift the heel into the bum again. Up onto the tippy fingers if you want. So we're not pulling that leg in, we're drawing it in, bringing our heel in, left knee's out wide, drop the pelvis forward into the mat. Lovely, and then we'll release that leg, okay? Sole of the foot goes onto that left block, both hands onto the right block, and we'll just come into a modified Ardha Honeyman. So you've got the leg outside the line of its hip, and we're drawing back down to our right butt cheek. Now let's get this lovely lift over the front ankle into that foot. Good. 
And then from here at the top, take your foot, place it in between the two blocks. Okay. Plant the hands on the back, curl the toe under, lift the back knee. Okay. Once you've lifted the back knee, we're going to come into extended pyramid pose, so squaring off the pelvis. And then we'll press gently back into our right heel. And we'll keep the length in the torso here. Lovely. So from here, slide your left foot back about 6 to 12 inches so that you can get a nice space between the two legs. Sorry, between the block and foot. And we'll bring our right foot in front, heel toe. Lift the sit bones up and exhale, find your fold. Good, so we've got really straight feet. Okay, and you can rock it forward and back a little bit. Just see where you can elicit the nicest stretch into the back of that leg and then find that space and settle into it. Fold it out. Lovely. So we're going to extend the length from the two arms. Left foot staying where it is. We're going to slide our right leg back through our standing L, through our open hip position. Ardha contrast the leg. Okay. So you can come onto the tippy fingers of those right hands already. Okay. Grounding into our left hand will come into our Ardha Chandrasana. Good. Lovely. Now, as we bring that right hand down to the floor, I'm going to square off a little bit, lift that right leg a little bit higher, keep our right hand on our block, swing back with our left hand, catch our right big toe or instep. Lovely. And then we're going to take the left hand down. Now, just very carefully, re-square off the pelvis, okay? There's a space between your, your two blocks here that you can swing that left leg. So we're going to bend into our right knee, swing our left leg through, roll up onto the ball of our right foot, push it through and lift. Good. And then bring it all the way back. Try not to touch the floor. Standing L. One more time. Tuck it in. Engage the core. Press it through. Last time to bring it all the way back. Lovely. And then we can just step that leg back. Step back into our plank pose. From our plank pose, we're going to take shoulders forward. So, balls of the feet are on the mat at the minute. But now we're going to rock body weight forward. So we get the press into the wrists. The core is lifted. Lovely. One more breath here. And then we'll press it back into our downward facing dog. Hands on the block, lengthen it back so we can find it quite easy now to settle towards our heels. From our downward facing dog into tabletop. From tabletop back into our hair pose. And then we're going to lift the bum, so we're going to place the elbows onto the blocks. Fingertips around the base of the neck, okay? If you can kind of keep them spread out towards the shoulders, that's even better, okay? You may need to walk the knees back a little bit here, but your head should be able to fit directly down to the floor in between those blocks. So you're starting to get a little press into the shoulders and the elbows here. So take the chin forward and the forehead down onto the mat, the nose down onto the mat. And just feel that into the shoulders. Okay, and you can extend it by walking the arms forward a little bit more or drawing back a little bit more and pressing down a little bit more. Lovely, and we'll release the arms, just press it all the way back up. Right foot is coming onto that block. 
I'm gonna walk that left leg away as far as it can go. Soften the top of the foot onto the mat. Tippy fingers lift up, lengthen, press the hips forward. So again, ankle bone and right in the knee. Good. So you use the breath just to soften here. You don't have to do even a lot of work. You just have to let yourself find space and move into that space. Lovely, and then we're going to curl the toe under in that left foot, lift that left knee, ground that left hand to the block, turn it out to the right, draw that rib cage through, so we've got a lot of space here, press back into that left heel, keep right knee in line with right ankle. Lovely, and then we'll bring time, we're going to bring our right hand to the inside of the two blocks, step the left foot in a little bit, swivel the heel down. Inhale, turning it to the left. Lovely, and then we're going to extend and lengthen into that right leg. Keep this lovely lift into the left side. Lovely. And then we'll swing that left hand down. Okay, we square ourselves off over that, drop our back knee down to the floor. I'm going to take our foot over the edge and press that knee forward okay, and just simply float it up. So now we have the ankle and heel in front of our right knee and we're sending left hip forward. Brilliant. And then we're going to slide that foot back onto the block. Okay. Roll onto knife edge of the little side. Okay. And then just send the knee out. Good. Breathe. Remember, it's all about letting the hips relax into this. And then bring the hand down, we'll curl the toe under the back foot, lift and extend that leg away and sink the pelvis down another little bit. So it should be a strong hip for flex the stretch in that leg. Right. And then as the hand comes down, we'll drop the knee okay, and we'll push and point. So tip your fingers on the block, knee spills out wide. Heel draws into butt cheek. Really pointy, pointy, pointy toes. Keep pulling them in a bit more, a bit more, a bit more. A bit more. Good. And then as we release that out, okay, we'll take the foot, place it in between the block. Okay, curl the toe under the back foot. Lift the back knee, stretch it back, extend the pyramid pose. We want to draw that left heel. Back and down. Keep the length of the torso. So you don't even need to fold down this leg. We've got those blocks to help us to so lift it a little bit. And then we'll slide that right foot back again about six to ten inches. Okay. Step the left foot in front of it. Lift up first. Make sure the two feet are directly in line. Exhale, fold it out. And again, you can give yourself a little rock forward and back here. And then find a place that gives you that little extra oomph and lift. Lovely. So we've got our right foot and keep it stable. I'm going to slide our left leg back all the way through. Standing out into Ardha Chandrasana. Okay. So have a little look. Lift and open that hip. Elevate through your standing arm, right arm. And then gently turn head, neck, chest to the left. 
pressing into that right big toe. Active lovely legs. Lovely. Good. Remember as we take the left hand down, I'm going to lift that right leg just a little bit higher. Reach up with our right hand, find our left foot. Now push the foot away and lift the knee up a little bit higher. Brilliant, and then we'll bring that right hand back down. So we're going to do that little sweep through. Okay, so tuck the left knee into the tummy. Okay, as you roll onto the ball of the foot, you want to try and slide that left leg through without putting it on the floor. And then bringing it through, lift it into standing up. And then tuck, engage, little tiny ball. Three you go, extend the leg. And then lift and bring it all the way up. Lovely. And then just step that left leg back. Right leg back down, facing dog. Inhale forward into our plank pose. Another little push forward, shoulders forward, right onto the tips of those toes, sucking belly button into spine. And then we'll release the knees down, soften the tops of the feet, come back into our headboard. Well done, tabletop. Cross out the legs, roll over the bums, bring yourselves into the middle of the mat. Good, so we'll lay down here, okay, and just find. But we'll curl the tail arms and just settle. Just settle here for a wee moment. See the hips whip. Okay, we'll take the hand, grab one of the blocks that we have, and lift the bum, and we're going to place the block under our sacrum so it's lengthways from side of the mat to side of the mat. On its flattest side, just relax into the upper back and shoulders. This is quite nice just to settle, to settle here for a wee moment. Lovely. So from here, we're going to push it right for a minute. Lift the left knee into the chest. We'll slide the hand down the front of the left shin. Now draw the heel and the sole of the foot towards the side edge of your left thigh. Place the instep along the side edge of your block. And then gently press down into that shin. Okay, now the shin won't necessarily come to the floor because you've got our tail stuck on the block here. That's fine. So you just try to keep that lovely alignment. But then from here we're going to push the left foot, sorry, right foot into the mat, lift the hips up, okay, and really push that lovely left knee down and left hip up. Just trying to catch into that quad. Good. As you drop the bar, make sure you feel that blocks there. Try and slide the left foot up a little bit higher. Okay. And then maybe the shin will come down to the floor now. Good. And so just breathe into that lovely quad. Keep sliding the foot up the mat a little bit. And place your hands wherever you want to rest them. Lovely. And then we'll release out that left foot. Okay. And then do the same with the right. So we'll tuck the right knee into the chest. We'll slide our hands down the front. Okay, so once we catch hold of the foot, the foot sort of slides to the side edge. You want to take it up as high as it can go. Square it off down and push down towards that shin. So again, the shin might not rest on the floor here. Okay, I'm just doing it incrementally. And then we'll press the left foot into the mat, lift the hips up, push the knee down another little bit, lift the hips up a little bit higher. Good. 
push the knee down another little bit. And then when we drop the bum to the floor, maybe we can catch hold of that foot and ankle, slide it up another little bit. And then maybe that front shin will come down on the mat then. If it doesn't, it's just intention. Breathing into your hip crease and right down into that quad. Lovely long breath. And then we'll release that lovely foot. So from here, we're gonna flip it onto the second side. Again, make sure it nestles safely into that sacrum. Okay. If you have the foam blocks, they can be a little bit wobbly, so do try and find that place. Okay. And just think about bridge pose legs. Lovely. From our bridge pose legs, we're going to extend the legs and feet away. I'm going to keep them hips width and we're going to float the arms up and over the head. Lift the front chest wall into the shin and relax the backs of the shoulders into the mat. Lovely. It's just this is a nice supported back bend here. And then we'll bring the arms back, we'll re-bend the knees. Okay, now we are gonna try and tip it onto its top side. So again, remember, safety is important. You don't wanna be wobbling around too much. So you're probably gonna have to walk the feet in a little bit more and so you can come onto the toes, lift the hips, okay, and take it onto its highest side. Now, it's entirely up to you whether you sort of bring it that way or across the waist. You have to feel that it's in a comfortable place. And then we're going to try and rest the heels back down onto the mat. Okay, doesn't matter if you're still like this, maybe one heel's coming down, maybe you're swapping it out. Good. So from here, okay, you can reach forward and maybe find your heels, hold on to them. If not, you can take your hands, interlace your fingers and bring the rounded side of the shoulders onto the mat. Good. And then we're going to lift our right foot, bring it in, maybe grab hold of it, place the top of the toe into the mat. And another little bit. Soften the back neck and shoulders into the mat. And then we'll swap it around with our left foot. So grab it, tuck it in, top of the toes into the floor. Keep lifting the hip bones. Fill in another little bit. Lovely. And then we'll release that all the way out. We'll take the block out of the bus and we'll just gently, very, very, very gently just float it back down to the floor. And don't do anything here, just slide the shoulders out. Just give yourself a wee moment to let the spine settle. Lovely. And then we'll smooth and tuck that tail in a little bit, smooth the lower back into the mat. Lift our right knee into the chest. We'll give a lovely little hug. And then swapping it around, left knee into chest, we'll get a little hug. Lovely. Once you put the two feet onto the floor, kind of walk them out almost towards the edge of the mat. And just simply flip flop the knees from side to side. Good. Nice and slowly. Great. And then we'll take it over to the right, okay? And gently press that left inside thigh down into the mat. Gently turn head to the left. Good, 
it to use the up and so far energy draw it needed. And then we'll take it over to the left, same thing, right hand side, side, press this down. Head turns to the right. And then we'll pop back to center. Okay, we're gonna tuck the knees one last time into our chest wall. Soften and smooth into your lower back. And then gently extending the legs away, just giving yourself a couple of moments time out. Just give your thumbs a little shake out on the floor. Soften and smooth in the back, release the arms. Big breath in and then just open the mouth and let go. Just bringing your awareness to the back part of your body. Okay. It's all the parts of the body that are connected towards the floor or completely into the floor and the mat. Okay. So just being aware that if there's any areas that don't feel like they're softening down into the mat, that's okay. Just spread and smooth out the body as much as you can. taking a few moments time out here just to resettle into your breath. Get rid of all the byproducts of your metabolism after everything that you've done today. Simply enjoying just that little bit of time out. Both physical activity and mental activity. Awesome. So we'll just wriggle fingers, wriggle toes, maybe shake out the legs a little bit, and to extend into our stretch just to wake up every single cell. Good, and then gently walk the feet in. So do smooth the lower back into the mat before you lift the knees. Okay, and then just gently lift them and give yourself a tight hug. It's a good hug to release them to that lower back. And maybe you want to circle the knees a few times here if it's still feeling a little bit tight. One way and then the other. Lovely. And then from here we'll just gently roll it up into an easy cross leg. Lovely, well done, everybody. Have a lovely day. Namaste.